Welcome to the Spooky Tales podcast, presented by me, John. And me, Louise. We have been fascinated by spooky goings-on since we can remember, and wanted to share with you the stories that pique our interest. Today's story is a continuation of hauntings, possession, poltergeist, psychological manipulation, and an unexpected twist. It's the spooky tale of The Black Alchemist, Part 3. Welcome, or welcome back, to the Spooky Tales podcast. So, where are we in this intriguing and dark tale of the Black Alchemist? Well, Andrew Collins, of Ancient Aliens fame, and Bernard, a psychic, having started on a quest to discover the Stave of Nazar, an ancient Egyptian rod, once belonging to Robert Fitzhammon, cousin of William the Conqueror, had been led by various psychic means to discover a variety of stone spearheads and magical sigils on them. They appear to be part of a dark and elaborate black magic ceremonies by a man who they called the Black Alchemist. They surmised the Black Alchemist was attempting to achieve a form of transmutation or transformation to immortality by these ancient ceremonies. We left Andy and Bernard having discovered another stone spearhead in a church swirling in dark and chaotic energies. Also, a letter. A letter addressed to Andrew directly. The Black Alchemist now knew his name. So what did he do? The dark energies were still swirling above. Bernard could feel that the Black Alchemist was setting up a ring of darkness to channel the elemental energies. Part of that ring was still active. He could sense that another marker or stone was located in a nearby church. And he knew that Rettenden Church was nearby. They headed to the church and discovered the second marker. There would be more to create the ring and headed to another church, this time the church at Downham. Why was the Black Alchemist setting up a ring of darkness? And why in the home counties of South East England? It would appear that the Black Alchemist was setting up another trap. He knew Andy's name and was toying with them by placing markers knowing that they would seek them out. He had even left a letter for Andy. And they still decided to carry on. Why? A sense of duty? Good versus evil? Yes, and maybe. Before they made their way to Downham Church, Bernard received messages in the graveyard from a ghostly figure of the Blue Lady named Cecilia, who confirmed to Bernard that the Black Alchemist had indeed been to Downham and another church down a long lane, but did not leave a marker at this other church. One second. He was receiving messages... From a ghostly figure? Yeah, psychically. Oh, psychically. He didn't see her? Uh, well, I suppose in his mind's eye. His mind, oh. And that's just kind of fine? Yes. Yes, I mean, that's... Just kind of... Bernard the psychic. Yes, that's true. Okay. That's kind of his job, really, at yes. this point. Right, that's okay. His, that's his role, and, and this this sort of dynamic duo. And he did, we don't know who Celia is? Well, or Cecilia. Ce- Cecilia? Or it Celia? is Cecilia. You're right. Cecilia, Cecilia isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the blue lady named Cecilia... Oh, right, okay. Yes. We don't know any more about who she is. Not at this point. Ooh, yes. this is a little breadcrumb. I like it. Okay. Yes. All right, yep, okay. So, unperturbed, they carried on to Downham Church. On the way, they impulsively turned down a lane named Church Lane. Is it a lane leading to a church? Well, let's find out. And found a church hey! down a long lane. It yeah. is. That makes sense, doesn't it? I love these people with their crazy naming of streets. Absolutely. It's like school road, isn't it? Yeah. Might find a school there. It dawned on them that they were being led by the nose, by the black alchemist, but decided to carry on nonetheless. They were in too deep now. At Downham Church, Bernard used his gifts, that's the psychic one. Yes. Yeah. No, rather than, you know, frankincense and myrrh or something yeah. like that, to locate the marker at the base of the east wall of the church. 
Andy purged the marker of its dark psychic charge. Wow, that sounds cool. Yeah, that's I think he, how he sometimes does it with a vision oh. yeah, or a um, bit of smudging with a bit of yeah, sage. Or, or sometimes he has holy water. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. Where's he got that from? A oh, church. Yeah. <laughs> Not, I the, not the, the church there's that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he noticed an image inscribed on it, a long snake with oh, yeah. two matchstick men inside its body. There was a word next to the drawing. What did it say? Soon. A bit vague, if a little threatening as well. Indeed. Andy turned to talk to Bernard, but he wasn't there. No. Andy called his name. Bernard! <laughs> There was no reply. Andy was getting a little worried now and walked around the graveyard shouting Bernard's name. Bernard! Bernard! Eventually, he heard a low moan come from far off. Ooh. No, it's lower than that. Ooh. Better. He ran towards it and found Bernard in a heap on the grass. Oh gosh, what had happened? Had he been psychically attacked, attacked or something? Or attached? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It took some time for Bernard to recover, enough to tell Andy that a bolt of darkness had oh. hit him once the marker was discovered. Next thing he knew, Andy was standing over him. Andy wanted to get to the running well, where he thought things would come to a head. What's the running well? Ah, uh, we shall find out. Okay. It all led there. They needed guidance on what to do when they got there. Bernard would need to contact his Elizabethan alchemist again. However... Andy realised Bernard was in no state to carry on, and yet he thought a quick pint at a pub down the road might revive him enough to figure out the next steps. I'm sensing a theme with both Andy and Bernard, that if things get too much, a quick pint is always a good idea. Yeah, I just love how they go to these quite normal pubs and discuss these arcane things next to the fruit machine. Oh, yeah, he's right. And the jukebox. <laughs> the jukebox yeah oh imagine this is the age of the jukebox it is, isn't it it's not like true. now which is a kind of yeah yeah they're probably nice pubs as well are you imagine them with nice pubs well i think they'd with be, a roaring fire well no they won't be your little snugs will they uh, they'll, they'll be much more of your, your your towny pubs i imagine oh okay all right then so anyway a quick point or a leisurely point yes anyway bernard agreed at a local pub, pints on the table, Andy decided it was a good time to open the black envelope that was addressed to him found earlier in the church porch. Remember that? Oh, yes, I must have been so... That just must be so freaky, the idea yeah. that somebody that you think is badness... And you, darkness, you, and you think is, you know, away over there... Yes, is aware of you. Yeah, Ooh. chasing after him. Yes! Yeah, absolutely. A little bit Scooby. Very scooby, yes. <laughs> anyway, Andy carefully opened it. Gosh, completely. Yeah, in the pub next did to it, the jukebox. You know, do you not think, though, you'd want to kind of purge that? Well, if, uh, yes, it, I don't... It didn't say he did. He didn't sort of smudge it or anything. So, who knows? Maybe with his pint. Could have been, yeah. Carefully, carefully sort of wafted the aromas of the hops over it. <laughs> Mind you, I'm assuming it's... A nice ale, right? Could have been you know, a lager top. No, no, they haven't pints. They're proper. They're yeah, proper. I think you're right. Yeah. Bernard sounds more of an ale guy, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, hairs on your chest, that kind of beer. <laughs> That's right. Pint of mild. Ooh. Oh dear, no. Anyway, uh, Andy carefully opened it. It contained crystals, Ooh. pages from a book Andy had written on the running well, Ooh. which is where they were. were Andy to go. wanted to go. Yeah, and a death threat. Yeah. And perturbed, Andy persuaded Bernard, now refreshed, Excellent. to contact his Elizabethan alchemist. Does he not say what the threat was? You will die? Or is it just kind of bold? Or I, I think we find out. Oh, right. Yes. There's an awful lot <laughs> you're teasing us know, with. That's right. I can't quite remember. Oh, right. Okay, fair enough. But let's say it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It was, but hold me to that. Okay. If, if not, then I shall bluff it some other way. Right, okay. Um, it was successful. They now had the information they required. So contacting his Elizabethan alchemist was right, successful. successful. Right, successful. They now had the information they required. The black alchemist had affected the running well. No. Changing its lunar energies to allow him to conduct dark rituals. I assume lunar energies being pure and light and lovely. 
Well, well, yes, you'd imagine so from the moon. Yes, or more peaceful at least, not dark and horrible. Yeah. Had Andy and Bernard turned up not knowing this and tried to tune in to the Running Well site, Ooh. they might have fallen under the control of the Black Alchemist's ritual trap. Oh my gosh! So what What were they going to do? Kind of reverse it somehow? They're going it, to reverse his, his energies or it, something? Exactly. Flood the site with the opposite force. Wow. Oh. A golden solar energy by means of a mental visualisation, similar to how they returned strength to Ogmore at Burlow Castle the previous year. If I'm honest, I can't really remember who Ogmore was. <laughs> he was this um, uh, kind of a warrior dwarf ah. that they met at Burlow Castle, which was basically a mound which used to have a castle on it. At Burlow. Right. Not far from Little Littleton Church. Oh, right. I remember okay. the guy with the... And not far from where the guy, the chalk figure of the ch- uh, chap on the hillside yes. would be with a big stave. Yes. Uh, or two of them, actually. Yes. And, la- and the previous year, they had... Um, uh, he was a guardian of Burlow Castle. Yes. And he was he was not happy. No. And they had helped him with this sort of mental visualisation. Yes. And uh, he had given them a good tip about the church that they were, then oh, went on to. Little, oh, little, okay. Little, little. Yes, I see. Yes, now it's all coming back to me. Thank you for that. That's yes, all right. Good stuff. I'm amazed I remembered myself. Oh, no, you did well. You did well. Okay, right. Anyway, however, this was an upgrade on what they did for Ogmore at Burlow Castle. Version two. Yes, they were going to use the fire of Michael. What, as in kind of arc... Angel Michael with his flaming sword. Exactly. Mm. So, by coincidence or not, this was an image that Bernard had seen earlier in the evening. Not coincidence. No. Andy was uneasy in using this method as he knew it would also destroy residual memories and energy forms at the site of the Running Well site. Some perhaps containing 2,000 years of religious devotion at the well. I see, like a sort of mystical energy antibiotic takes out both the good and the bad so did they go ahead and invoke the fire of of michael i know what he means though about residual energies because in some churches where there has been devotion for a long period of time it does have a different energy when you walk in mm. don't you think well They're yeah just... absolutely churches so they have this sense of quiet and uh almost meditative state about them it is they? isn't it so many people have have you know, move, be moved to that mm-hmm. that state. It kind of is imbued in the stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yes, so you, you're right. That sort of analogy of uh, it blasts the good and the bad, like an antibiotic. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so it, it did exactly that. Ooh. Oh well. But it was not without its drama, though. They approached the well to invoke the fire of Michael when both came to a stop, and in the gap in the hedgerow, some twenty yards away, stood a black amorphous form. I like that word amorphous. It's lovely. Yeah. Menacing and bilious, another Ooh, good another word. Good, yes. Yeah. In quality. They sensed this was not just a guard left by the black alchemist, Ooh. but it would trigger the dark ritual that lay in store for them at the well, endangering their lives. In what way? What do you mean, in what way? Well, how would it endanger their lives? What would happen? Oh, I see what you mean. Well, the death threat from the letter would become real. Earlier, Bernard had taken a risk and attuned to the well, but from a distance. Yeah. He picked up images of the Black Alchemist, stirring the water anti-clockwise, mm. aligning the dark energies with the marker points placed in the four churches. Remember, these are the four churches, and they had sort of, in the previous episode, they were driving and, could, and Bernard could see these horrendous sort of energies swirling around. And yeah. Bernard heard the words that the Black Alchemist had said. As he swirled the water, a body will be found with a rope around its neck. A body will be found in a fire. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's quite disturbing, isn't it? Yes. The Black Alchemist was setting a trap that, if triggered, would possess Andy and Bernard, driving them to take their own lives, one by hanging, one by fire. That is really dark. It really is, yes. I mean, that serial killer kind of... Dark. Yeah, so you asked what the death threats were in the letter. There yes, you thank go. you. Yes. <laughs> oh, well done. Andy found a stone marker in the well, more than more of a stream, to be honest, 
It, I wasn't going to lie. No, no, I'm glad you were honest about that. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> it had two soluble crystals in it, which represented Bernard and Andy. And as they dissolved and faded into the sacred water, so would their life force until nothing was left. That date being Wednesday the 15th of October 1986 that they would be dead. Andy still felt a paranoia that it may yet come to pass despite the fire of Michael. Nine nights to live, for it was Tuesday, the 7th of October. Was it was it paranoia or was it more of a scare tactic? I.e. you're going to die on this day and so somehow you choose things that means that you'll die. Well, yes, they did. They didn't know. Of course, it's a bit like voodoo, you mean? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that if you have, if you somebody says this has been placed on you, somehow, yeah, you bring it to pass. You know, yeah, your own to, actions. Yes, in then avoid in trying to avoid it or to. Yeah. You think it's a possibility, so it becomes a possibility. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Bernard decided he was going offline for a while to recuperate. I don't blame him. Yeah. Going to need more than a point to fix this. Yeah. I feel. Andy, although exhausted, yes. decided to spend the next few days finding out as much as he could about the sigils and the crystals that they had collected. What did he find? Well, nothing amazing or conclusive. The language of the sigils was Greek, uh, along, with an, uh, well, along with unknown symbols. The crystals were a common substance used in indoor fireworks. Indoor fireworks, like the ones that fizzle like a small snake and then turn into grey dust. Exactly those. And, and, and the ones where it just gives a lot of smoke and so that you can't see across the other side of the room. We had those. Yes. And I, I we've had, we had those. I remember the, uh, having them at my cousin's. Yeah. And did you have the traffic light ones? So yes. So you had a kind of red smoke, yellow yeah. smoke and then green smoke and they all smelled unpleasant. Absolutely. Yes. yes. So it was the same kind of stuff as that. Ooh. Bernard called Andy with a strange request uh, after a few nights. What was it? He asked Andy's permission, as the guardian of the running well, if he could be there on the night of the 14th of October. The of October. So is that the day before? That the 15th? It was the 15th, wasn't it? Yeah, so that's the night before, yeah. <clears throat> so the last night before the death threat. Why did he ask Andy? And why did he think he was the guardian of the running well? That isn't something we knew, is it? No, but Bernard had received communication that he must ask the guardian to be there, as there would be a confrontation with the black alchemist. Oh. Bernard would, was to sit near the well in a hollow and would need protection, both spiritual and possibly physically. He thought Andy was the guardian because he had written a book about the running well some years previously. He knew its sacred tradition, its ancient history. He had researched those associated with it, both physical and spiritual. Have you read the um, the book about the running well? No, I haven't, no. Do you know what it, you've not seen it? No. I've no, never heard of that one. No, somewhere so, in Essex. Oh, is it? Mm. <clears throat> so did Andy agree that he was the guardian? Yeah, why not? So he gave Bernard his permission as the guardian? Yeah, go for it, he said. In the days leading up to the night of the 14th, Andy gathered an array of magical paraphernalia, incense, essential oils, religious icons, and that other religious essential uh, magical paraphernalia, an air pistol. An air pistol? Why didn't they have the holy holy hand grenade of Antioch? No, Brother Maynard was not available that night. On the day of the 14th, Andy visited the running well to check out the area. Very wise. Yeah, you know, it's a very good idea, actually. Yeah. You know, it all seemed that it was as it was from their visit to the previous week. Anyway, later that night, Andy and Bernard returned, parked the car and carried out a protection ritual for starters. Excellent. They made their way across the meadow to the well, cautiously and alert to danger from any dark corner or silhouette. However, all seemed calm. They set up a circle of protection using crystals and candles, incense and charcoal. Yeah. Then they waited. Andy left Bernard to see what he could pick up psychically. Bernard sensed that the black alchemist was not with them. He was in a wood far away from the well. Bernard began to attune to the black alchemist and could start to see what he was up to and started to be able to read his thoughts. Crikey, he was feeling confident then. What was the black alchemist up to? He was carving symbols into wood. 
more symbols. That's all he does, isn't it? Carves <laughs> sigils and symbols into things. Well, he knows what he's doing, though, doesn't oh, he? Oh, very true, yes. Yes, and as part of a meditation ritual, Bernard could see that the image of the Ouroboros symbol of alchemy and magic. That's the one with the snake biting in a circle, biting its own tail? Yeah? Yes, that's a better... I think, just let's say that, the snake yes. biting its own tail. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure I pronounced Ouroboros. I like the way there's just like this little moment where you take a little leap when you say it. Ouroboros, you <laughs> yes. kind of go, oh, all there's right. A, a definite runner. Run yes. yes. <laughs> anyway, Bernard began to feel sick. Not surprised. So he broke off. Yeah. Took some uh, some of Bach's rescue memory. Did he not need Let it? Let me try that again. Sorry, took some of Bach's rescue remedy yeah. and recovered. Good stuff. So the black alchemist had bottled it then, decided not to confront them? So it would seem. However, the rescue remedy had really pepped up Bernard and he began to have some visions of the guardian of the well. Cecile, the prioress. Ooh, that lady. Yes. Yes. So she was a prioress. Ah. And it must be that she's actually the guardian, not Andy. Yes. Uh, He saw um, Cecile, the prioress, uh, passing Roman soldiers from 2,000 years ago. The brutal murder of a young girl thought to be a witch who was buried close by. Bernard then received a wave of information from the Elizabethan alchemist, warning him of the black alchemist's disregard for the alchemist art and of the dark intentions that he had, that he works on the chaos of the earth, air, water and fire. The symbols that he uses being conductors of arcane forces in the universe. The Elizabethan alchemist instructed Bernard that to combat this, to put an end to this chaos, they must use the strict laws of the teachings of their lord, use the methods that they learnt, not to use vengeance, but study the Kabbalah. Where was Andy at this time? Well, he'd wandered off to check the perimeter, but returned after about 45 minutes to see how Bernard was getting on. Bernard gave him the update and by now sensed that the black alchemist was in the woods. Monksdown and Merworth, the woods in Kent and Clapham Woods uh, on the south coast. Right. Bernard shivered as he said Clapham Woods. Not a nice place at all, he said. And Andy knew the place, an eerie place near Worthing on the south coast. Andy was slightly disappointed that having gone to all their trouble, the black alchemist had not shown up. But but maybe that was part of his... His mind trick, his his kind of psychological war on them. Absolutely. And Andy sensed that this was not over, but had no idea in what way and what might happen next. He felt helpless. Well, at least they didn't die. Good point. Well made. This sense of helplessness continued when Bernard had a terrible nightmare, the grisly death of a priest in a church. He woke from that nightmare, gaining back this, his sense of self the knowledge that he was not there. Oh, that's such a relief, isn't it? When you realise you're safe and not in that nightmare. Was it a, a church he or Andy knew? It was. I know exactly what you mean. I had that the other night, by the way. I was learning... Uh, I had forgotten to learn my lines for a play. Yeah. And I woke up, I was thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? I don't know. And then it slowly dawned on me that I wasn't actually in a play. Yeah. And so I didn't have to worry about that. There's, there's seeing a grisly death of a priest and then realising... Oh, it's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same horror. Uh, OK, well, again, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure. OK, you obviously feel great horror when you didn't... <laughs> I, do. I barely know them when, I'm, when I do remember, you know, try true. to remember them. <laughs> Song words. Oh, my word. Yes. So, both Bernard and Andy knew the church well. It was Danbury right next to the Griffin pub, where he and Andy met on many occasions to discuss their projects and research. A, another pub. But also, he's really honing in on their territory, isn't he? He's circling around them. That's right, and they felt sure that that would be the Black Alchemist's next target. The church at Danbury? Yes. What they need is some sort of alarm system to warn them of his presence. Well, it's funny you should say that. Bernard had set up such an alarm system, a psychic alarm system surrounding the area, uh, well, surrounding the entire church and churchyard with small green crystals. 
Now they would know if the area was tampered with. Oh, that's quite, that's almost like them fighting back, but not fighting back as in just protecting the stuff. I, yeah. So how would how would Bernard be able to pick up the break in the force? Would it be a kind of a, an energetic sense? Yes, absolutely. So we're always quiet for several weeks. Bernard had dreams of the stave of Nazar. Remember that? Yeah. That was, uh, that was the thing that started the whole thing off, wasn't it? Absolutely. They went on a hunt for the stave in his arm. Yes, that's right. That's right. So one day, Bernard got a sense he needed to be out doing something. He looked in a local magazine at the events page. His eye caught an antiques fair not far away. He went along and, having browsed for a while, caught sight of a brass cobra three inches high. That sounds interesting. I know. That would catch my eye. Yes, it would have catched mine as well. It reminded him of a pair of brass candlesticks that Andy had used to psychically explore under the Pyramids of Giza, using es- the essence of the Stave of Nizar. Psychic essence, I, uh, I assume, as they had not found it. Yes, uh, that's right. Reminding him of that candlestick, he bought it, the little uh, the brass cobra. Yeah. The Indian youth who sold it to him then said once he had handed over the wrapped figure, you are in conflict with the one who reverses the wheel. Is this true? Well, that beat have a good day, I suppose. How did Bernard take it? <laughs> yes, that would take. Well, I, that I don't would know, take my I'm, breath, wouldn't I, it? It really would. And Actually, I'm, I'm so English, I'd probably go. Yes, that's right. That's <laughs> lovely. It's lovely to meet you and walk off. <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> that's, that's correct. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Or you just say, uh, no, I don't think so. Anyway, th- thanks very much. <laughs> Love the Cobra. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I wouldn't question it. Would you have questioned it? I would have just gone, yes, that's lovely. Or, or, or you may, may just sort of go, sorry, I beg your pardon. Yes. You're thinking you've misheard. Because yeah. obviously you're the one that's misheard, not, you know. Not anyway. I'm talking absolute, yeah. yeah. Oh, Bernard realised the youth was speaking, translating on behalf of a wizened old gentleman sat in the corner. That's quite a talent. I would not have noticed that. Yes. And he awaited his reply. Bernard assumed that they were talking about the black alchemist and not a problem with his car and mechanic. Yes. He said yes. <laughs> that was his response. <laughs> Bernard, go Bernard went, Bernard went yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Took a moment, realised it must have been the black alchemist and said yes. The old man said through the youth, the one you seek is like the coiled serpent. The one will stand in front of many dangers. No, no, you're going to have to speak. I just, I, I would struggle with this, you see. If somebody starts talking to me all cryptic, I'm going to be like, I do beg your pardon. Yeah, well, it's like a lot of these things where you, you want from us a sign, isn't it? You literally want a sign. Yes. You don't want to have these things you have to interpret. No, no, no interpreting things. I'm going to get it wrong. <laughs> yes, that's right. And I'm also not going to question somebody. So if they say something like that, I'm going to go, oh, right, OK. <laughs> no, no, that's not lovely. Right. Not, Thanks. I would, I'd probably forget to sort of say, so when, you, when you say the one, uh, who do you mean? Yeah. You know, just go, oh, I don't know what it means. Uh, yeah, so he assumed he meant Andy. Uh, and the youth then said to Bernard, my grandfather asks that you accept a gift from him. Oh, yeah. Further words made it clear that the gift was for Andy, not Bernard. Right. It will protect you, he said, and give protection of the seven. The seven? Yes. What was it? What was the gift? A sword stick. Oh, one of those walking sticks with a sword built in it that you see yes. on, on the kind of... Oh. Absolutely. You normally see them in Sherlock Holmes yes, type things. Yes, yeah. that's right. Now, and on the Antiques Roadshow, nobody goes, ooh. Oh, yes. When they do that's that. Right, yes. they go, Did you know that it could do this? And they go like that. <laughs> that's right. And the person goes, oh, no. Yeah. How much is it worth? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's, right. that's all they're thinking that's in their eyes. Anyway, now, what was odd about this was that one of Bernard's psychic impressions over the last few weeks was that the Black Alchemist used a sword stick in his rituals. Wow. And on hearing this, Andy had immediately wanted one. Don't blame him. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Pretty yeah. cool piece of kit. Absolutely. And he'd just been gifted one from an Indian mystic at a local antiques fair who knew of their situation. I know. That's so cool. Bernard sensed it was a highly charged magical tool infused with supernatural energies to invoke 
banish and channel psychic energies for magical purposes. It would protect them. Andy was blown away upon receiving it when they next met at the Griffin pub. I'm not surprised. I would be well chuffed. Would you not be well, Chuck? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Just this gift, fantastic gift out of nowhere. Yeah. And then a strange thing happened. What? As Andy was inspecting it, yes. Bernard thought he saw it turn into a snake. Ooh, like Moses' rod. That had the ability to turn into a snake. That did, didn't, didn't it? Yes, yeah. you, you've yeah. got that. Absolutely right. Yes, and, and that was linked to the stave of Nizar. Oh, wow. So... Was this sword stick to be the replacement for the stave of Nizar, which had begun this journey in the first place? Andy, against Bernard's wishes, took the sword stick to try it out in the churchyard. Don't blame him. And as he drove it into the ground, wow. there was a loud bang. The south door of the church had flung open, but there was no one around. Andy was sure this was a sign to go inside and ask the church guardian for a message. You see, I would have taken it as a sign, but I'd have taken it as a sign to get the hell out of there. Yes, I would have. Yes, I would have not then thought. Yeah, he's bold, isn't he? He is There bold. is, but there's some boldness there. I yeah. like it. Yeah, okay. Yes. He wouldn't want me as a psychic because uh, a, a sidekick as opposed to a psychic. Yes. A psychic, well, because I'm either. not a psychic. For <laughs> yeah. So either, yes. No, I'd be like, no, let's not yeah, go in. I'm, I'm off. Yeah. I'd be like, uh, if you're talking about Scooby-Doo, yeah. I'd, I'd be Shaggy. Yeah. yeah. And Scooby. Yeah. So I would not be Velma, who works it out. Oh, no. Well, no, I think you would, actually. No. Mm -hmm. no. Like I mean, I do like a nice jumper, but... Yeah. You oh. think you've got yourself in the Daphne role, have you? No, no, no. no I, I'm, I think I'm with you. I think I'm kind of more Shaggy, yeah. Scooby. Yeah. Kind of. Thank you, Dickie. Ooh, like that. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> he talked an unwilling Bernard, who's obviously doing a shaggy so, impression yeah, at this point, going, oh. to ask the Guardian for a message. Bernard asked and received images of the nightmare he had had of the grisly death of the priest. When you say grisly, what do you mean? Decapitated. Ooh. Blood everywhere. You see, you were saying that your dream about the stage was the same as that. Just pointing that out. <laughs> Dripping blood on the oh. on the on the flagstones oh, of the church. Oh dear! Yeah, absolutely. Standing in front of an audience where you don't know your name, I uh, don't know your words. Or your name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, Bernard was sufficiently freaked that he left. I'm not surprised. Both he and Andy took this to mean that the black alchemist would pay this church, their church, a visit. Did they know when? No. So what happened then? Nothing. Oh. There was no sign of the Black Alchemist for months. No. Just as Andy and Bernard were starting to assume this venture was over, that it had come to nothing at all, it all began again. So, there we go. End of part three of the Black Alchemist. Join us for part four, where we discover the links between our heroes, the Black Alchemist, the She-Wolf, and the great storm of October 1987, the worst storm to hit Britain in over 300 years. We hope you enjoyed the third part of this spooky tale. We look forward to joining you again for part four. If you have enjoyed these spooky tales, please do tell others and please leave us a review. That might help others to find our podcast. Thank you. Please do tell us your spooky tales, either in the YouTube comments or... Via email, which is the Spooky Tales Podcast at gmail.com. And come and follow us on Instagram at the Spooky Tales Podcast. Or why not visit us on our Facebook page at Spooky Tales? Thanks again. Until next time, bye. Bye. <laughs>